Good morning and welcome to another week of worshipping at home. Today I'm here not at St Peter's Church, obviously, which is still in the rebuild process, but talking to you from Brockley Hall, the place which has been our church for a number of years now and to which we look forward to returning for worship before too long. Our other two buildings, St Mary Magdalene at West Tisted and St Nicholas at Bishop Sutton will be open for your private prayer from tomorrow and I very much hope that you'll be able to make use of those. Please do observe the social distancing requirements that have been posted on the doors and make sure that we can open these places safely to be a blessing to everybody who needs some time in a sacred space within our community. So now let's come together in worship. Although we are apart, we come together to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image. And in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your Spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Whenever we gather together to worship, we acknowledge that we have failed and that we are flawed. And God knows that and offers us a second chance. So in the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Father, we've sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Father forgive us by the death of the Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all of our days. Amen. The psalm that's set for today is number 100. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Taken from the Revised English Bible, a reading from Exodus, chapter 19, starting at the second verse. They set out from Rephidim, and, entering the wilderness of Sinai, they encamped there, pitching their tents in front of the mountain. Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, and tell the sons of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, and how I have carried you on eagles' wings, and brought you here to me. If only you will now listen to me and keep my covenant, then out of all peoples you will become my special possession, for the whole earth is mine. You will be to me a kingdom of priests, my holy nation. 
These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. Moses went down and summoning the elders of the people, he set before them all these commands which the Lord had laid on him. As one, the people answered, Whatever the Lord has said, we will do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans chapter 5, starting at the first verse. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly, Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel is taken from Matthew 9, starting at verse 35. Jesus went around visiting all the towns and villages. He taught in the synagogues, preached the good news about the kingdom, and healed people with every kind of disease and sickness. And he saw the crowds. His heart was filled with pity for them, because they were worried and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. So he said to his disciples, the harvest is large, but there are few workers to gather it in. Pray to the owner of the harvest that he will send out workers to gather in the harvest. Jesus called his twelve disciples together and gave him authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, called Peter and his brother Andrew, James and his brother John, the son of Zebedee, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Patriot and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. These twelve men were sent out by Jesus with the following instructions. Do not go to any Gentile territory or any Samaritan towns. Instead, you are to go to those lost sheep, the people of Israel. Go and preach, the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, bring the dead back to life. Heal those who suffer from dreaded skin diseases and drive out demons. You have received without praying so give without being paid. Someone told me recently that lockdown didn't create new things in us, it just accentuated that which was already there. Well, if that's true, then I found out that I'm very much a rule keeper, not a rebel, much cooler though that might sound. I like to know what's what. I like to know where I am, what I'm allowed to do, what I'm not allowed to do, and what's coming next which means I've struggled a bit with coming out of lockdown just as much as I struggled with going into it. At least when we were in lockdown, it was nice and clear, wasn't it? Now it's lovely to see everybody again, but there are far more gray areas. In the beginning, we knew that we had to stay inside and I was fine with that. We could go outside if it was essential 
or for a daily walk. So the kids and the dogs and I would go out and we would have a nice walk around once a day. And I would go out and do those bits of my job that I knew were really essential. Things like going and visiting in a hospital or going to a funeral. It was quite clear in my mind what I should and I shouldn't do. I didn't go out for anything else. Now though, everything's blurred a bit. Everybody seems to be doing things a little bit differently, interpreting the guidance this way or that way. I'm not entirely sure I know what I'm meant to be doing. And it turns out that I've bred a rule keeper too, or at least one of them. And as I've taken him out, little by little, I've had to stop him going, call that two metres, as we negotiate shops and parks. It turns out he finds it a bit difficult to be told to do one thing and watch other people do something else too. And I suspect the two of us are not alone. It's hard to be responsible just for ourselves and not worry about how other people are behaving and what other people are doing. To start with, of course, our own actions don't just impact on us, do they? Our actions often do have an impact on those around us, the people we share this world with. It's not just what I do is OK for me and it doesn't matter to anybody else. But it's more than that. What I had to tell him, and what I had to learn myself just as much, was that there's nothing I can do when I worry about how, the, how other people might interpret rules. I'm worrying about something I have no control over. I'm worrying too about something that really isn't my business, unless it's directly impacting on me or on another person that I feel is vulnerable, then actually it doesn't matter. I've got to do what I believe is right and they've got to do what they believe is right in their situation. That's quite a hard lesson to learn, or at least I'm finding it a hard lesson to learn. In today's gospel, Jesus sends out his disciples. He gives them authority. He gives them authority to tell people about the kingdom, to tell people about what he's here to do and to do remarkable things in his name to heal disease and to cast out unclean spirits. He tells them that some places, some households will receive that message with joy. They'll get it straight away. But of course, other people won't. They won't understand or perhaps they'll disagree, perhaps they'll reject. And he tells them not to dwell on the ones that don't take on board the message, not to worry about the ones who reject them not to spend time cajoling or convincing, trying to change the outcome. Instead, shake the dust from their sandals and move on. And sometimes we need to do the same thing, not always, but sometimes in some circumstances. And this isn't saying that there is one truth for me and one truth for somebody else and that that's okay. It's a subtly different way of thinking about life and faith. We need to tell people about our faith. We need to tell people of the ways in which we've experienced God, of the ways in which we see the kingdom breaking into the world all the time in all sorts of amazing ways. And of course, we need to rejoice when people join in, when they respond excitedly and say, gosh, that happened to me. Do you think that might have been God? Or I agree, this is something new, something exciting, something I want to be part of. But not everybody will react in that way. And of course, it's important for us to be responsible, not just for ourselves, but for our society, to make sure we're part of conversations, all conversations that involve shaping the world and the culture in which we live. We want to be people who make it a place that reflects kingdom values, a place that does not have prejudice, a place without greed, a place without suffering. But we also need to remember that as much as we want to be involved in those things, as much as we want to transform those things, very often the only choice that we can make is the choice we make about our own lives and our own actions. We have a responsibility for the lives we choose to lead. Many, many of the things that we might criticise in others, we can actually see reflected in ourselves. Our job is not to criticise them. Our job is to look inwards and see what needs to change within ourselves. We need to be responsible for the response that we make to God's offer of free love and friendship and salvation. 
We can't make anybody else believe. We can tell them the stories, but the rest is up to the Holy Spirit. Our job is to look really carefully at our own response. Have we accepted that love? Do we perhaps need to return to it? Are we living in a way that reflects that love so freely given? So I'm learning, learning again and again, not to worry about what other people think and say and do. What they may or may not believe is a good idea. And probably even more importantly, I'm learning not to blame my actions or justify my behaviour by what they choose to do and say. I must respond as me. That's all I can offer and that's all I am able to do. Each Sunday we use a collect or a special prayer for the day. Often there's an alternative one that's a bit shorter and a bit clearer than the traditional version. And it's that alternative collect that I'd like to end my sermon with today. It's my prayer for me and it's my prayer that you'll choose to pray it for yourself and walk in the way of love and wisdom today and every day. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in the ways of wisdom that we may find true life. In Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God must teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go out from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hook. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who's come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Remembering that we are united not just with each other around the benefice, but also with our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world, past and present, we join together to acknowledge our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We intercede for others in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, we ask that you meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. The Lord Jesus built his church on the apostles, united with them in faithfulness to the gospel's teaching and way of life. We pray for our individual and communal roles in this benefice. We pray for Claire, who leads us. We pray for our bishops that they grow in union with Peter and lead us by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, when the waves of life threaten to overwhelm us, forgive us if we blame you or others for our troubles. Teach us to find you in the storms of life and give us the faith of those early disciples to always believe that you will bring calm and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you guide your church, especially when differences amongst us seem to threaten our very existence. We faith each other, but often do not see the face. Too often we notice the colour of the skin. Help us now to look again to see Jesus in the face and to recognise hope, aspiration and desires. Creator God, we are part of the tensions and injustices of the world. Heal the resentment between people and intervene in the world's conflicts. Help us to walk humbly with you at our side. And when we come to the crossroads and have to choose which way to go, lead us down the path of justice and righteousness while steering us away from the road that leads to selfishness and sin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we thank you for the joy of human life and for all those amongst whom we live and work. We especially pray for those amongst our friends and families who do not know you, or whose faith has been shaken. Help them to see Jesus as the anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure, while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all who suffer in body, mind or spirit, and for all those who care for them. We pray for any who are in special need of our prayers at this time, especially those known personally to us. Here we mention Jean, and we raise the others before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those sudden, saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, for members of our families who have died and whose anniversary we recall. Help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the Holy Family around us until we are reunited once more in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. And as we move into the coming week, 
help us to remember our Saviour's words as he sent his disciples out into the world. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's hold before Almighty God those things and people that are on our hearts and minds this morning, and I'll draw our prayers together in the words of the Collect. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's draw our prayers together in the words that Jesus himself taught us as we say, Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ be with me. Christ within me. Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Fill us, Lord, with the spirit of your love, and as you fed us with your presence today, so make us one in heart and mind. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 